In this video, I'm going to compare six different image upscalers to help you increase the quality of your AI artwork. Now, most of these tools I'm going to mention do have a free version where you can test upscaling a few images before you have to pay, but then usually after a little while, it's either a monthly fee or like a one-off fee to access the tool. There is one option that I'm going to mention towards the end, which is currently totally free, which is quite rare to find with image upscalers, so stick around for that. But besides the quality, I am also going to compare the price to help you make a better choice when picking your image upscaler. So here we are inside of Photoshop where I'm going to compare the various different results that I got. This is the original image from Mid Journey, which uh, looks pretty good when it's zoomed out. Don't get me wrong, but if we zoom in close to this, then you can see all of the blur on the image and these sort of JPEG artifacts around the edges, which would not look very good if it's printed on a, on a poster, for example. Just to let you know, this was generated in mid-journey and the original dimensions were 816 by 1456 pixels. And I used all of these tools to increase the size four times. I wanted it to be a fair comparison. So each image uh, or each of the upscaled images are in 3264 by 5,824 pixels. That's not the maximum you can do. Usually the free versions are a bit limited, but the premium versions of a lot of these sites, you can upscale by like eight times or 12 times even, rather than just four. So zooming into this top corner right here, where we're going to compare this, uh, the ear and the eye are some good bits to focus on. This is obviously still the original, very blurry and pixelated. And if we hide this, we now see the first website that I tried called Image Larger. On Image Larger, you can sign up to a free account and you get eight free images. Once those have run out, you would need to sign up to a plan um, of at least $9 a month, which gives you 100 images per month that you can upscale. And yes, so I think the result is not bad. It's pretty good. It has preserved quite a lot of the detail of the fur, which is definitely nice. Like it looks very um, realistic in some cases, but what I don't like or what I noticed with Image Larger, especially in comparison to some of the other results, is that there is a lot of extra color that's been added here, like quite a bit of red, and green, you can also see it in the ear right here, um, which if you go back to the original, isn't really there. It's more of a black and gray mixture. So uh, that's a bit of a downside that it's added this sort of ghosting color effect. Um, the edge looks pretty good. Looks a lot sharper than the original, in my opinion. So Image Larger did a good job of that. Now, one thing to mention, which is a bonus, I think, for Image Larger, is that the file size was very small. I think the original was something like one and a half megabyte, and the upscaled version, even though it's four times higher resolution, was only two megabytes. That is a, a definite bonus, because a lot of these other tools create very, very big file sizes once you increase the quality. So let's move on to the next option then. Uh, after Image Larger, I went ahead and tried Giga Pixel. I had heard a lot of people mention this tool and it does definitely do a good job. If we compare it to the original, it does a good job of highlighting these lines and really emphasizing the colors. The edge of the ear also looks really, really good and sharp. And the eye, I think very noticeably, especially compared to Image Larger, is a lot better. Like the colors are very smooth. Um, it's not as grainy right here and distorted. Now, some of the, some of the uh, texture may get lost in the fur of the dog, but I don't think that is a massive downside. So uh, Gigapixel, I think, looks really good. Now, the downside there is if you run out of your free uses, I don't know how many exactly you get, but essentially you have to download a software onto your PC. You can try it out for free, but once you've run out, you need to pay $100. It's a one-off fee, and then you can use the tool forever in a sense. So it's sort of good in a sense that you don't have to pay something every single month, but you are going to have to pay out quite a bit upfront if you want to settle on Gigapixel. But yeah, from these results, it does look very, very good in my opinion. Oh, and also with Gigapixel, the file size was really, really small as well, which is again, I think a big benefit to this. Moving on from Gigapixel, next up I tried Big JPEG. And if I hide Gigapixel, you can see this one did a good job around the edges. It's definitely very smooth. It's gotten rid of the artifacts from the original. Um, but if we compare it with Gigapixel, then you will see it does lose some of its detail. Like the fur is a lot um, more like a vector, which is maybe in some cases not a bad thing for print and demand. Um, but if you're trying to upscale a photo, then something like Gigapixel might be better because it retains more of the actual detail and realism. 
But nevertheless, big JPEG, pretty good result. The color has faded a tiny bit. It's not as strong as in Gigapixel. The original, yeah, it's quite close to the original, I would say. Um, but yeah, overall, big JPEG, I think a valid option. Now, one benefit here is that you get 20 free images per month that resets if you have an account. So that's really handy. And the plan or the first paid plan is actually really cheap. It's only $6 and you get 500 images which is a very, very good value, in my opinion, compared to some of these other tools and websites that we have as options. Big JPEG, while it might not be perfect in terms of retaining quality or retaining detail, is definitely a, a nice cheap option with quite a few free uses as well. So the next tool I tried out is actually Photoshop. And before I show you what that result looks like, I'll just quickly show you how I did it. Um, so you know how to replicate the process. So uh, once you have your image selected in the layers panel, you just have to head up to filters, then click on neural filters and a section will pop out right here. I'm just going to have to move my face where you will have to essentially download the super zoom option right here. And once that's downloaded and installed, you can tick this option. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll be able to click the magnifying glass to uh, increase the quality. So now I've done it two times. It takes a little while to process. Um, in this case, it would take longer because this is already a big image. But you also have various options down here to remove JPEG artifacts, uh, to reduce noise and to sharpen the image. I think I had mine uh, quite sharpened and I removed the JPEG artifacts. I didn't do much noise reduction just to give you an idea, but you, you would have to click this magnifying glass multiple times to increase the quality of the image multiple times. So uh, that's that. Once it's done uh, processing down here, you just click on OK and that will create the new image. So that's quite a cool function um, that I found recently. And essentially, if we uh, hide big JPEG now and I move my face back over, we can see the Photoshop result. Now I'm not too impressed with it, to be honest. I was hoping it looks better in comparison to some of these other ones. Um, but yeah, it's just very, very distorted almost. Um, now it does retain some of the details, but not in a great way. If we compare it to Gigapixel, for example, which retained quite a lot of detail, then this one just looks a lot unrealistic, uh, a lot more unrealistic for some reason, and just grungy, grainy, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it, it doesn't look like a good result. The eye as well is a good comparison. So a lot of these other sides did a better job of the eye, except for image larger. Um, image larger probably does look worse than Photoshop, to be honest, in some ways. Um, the edge as well, it, it's good, it's not perfect. Um, I think Big JPEG did a better job of the edge, personally. You zoom in a bit closer, well, there's not much of a difference, but um, I think you get the idea. I mean, Photoshop uh, obviously is not uh, mainly focused on upscaling. It has so many different features, so I can understand why it's not. Um, perfect comparison to a tool that specializes in that area. But if you already have Photoshop, it's definitely a valid option. Um, they do a $10 per month photography plan, I'm pretty sure, at least they, they do in the UK. And that obviously gives you access to the entire suite of tools, create, well, to, to edit photos or to create t-shirt designs if you want to. Um, whilst the image upscaler is not perfect, Photoshop is quite a valuable tool to have in the arsenal. So that's it for Photoshop. Oh yeah, and one benefit obviously is you can do it with as many images as you want. There's no limit to this. That's quite a good benefit in comparison to the other options. Next up after Photoshop, I had Nightmare AI to try. Um, that is a tool that used to be free and I have been using most of this time, but they've recently introduced pricing. So now you actually pay per time that you've used. So um, that's kind of good in the sense that if you only, well, upscale like a few images, like five say in a month, you only pay for those five images that you've upscaled. You don't pay like $10 for the entire month. So that's one benefit, but also it could maybe add up quite quickly. I don't know, I've not tested it yet. It's very new. Um, but if we look at the actual results, the edge I think looks really good right here. If we compare it to the original, I think it made it did a great job um, comparing it to Photoshop. Um, we can see that Nightmare AI actually gets rid of the noise a lot better. Maybe that's because I didn't enable much of a noise reduction in the super zoom function with Photoshop. But nevertheless, I think if we focus on the fur instead, Nightmare AI did a way better job of making the fur of the wolf look realistic. Um, at least some comparison to Photoshop. Photoshop just, I don't know, I don't know what it was doing, but yeah. Nightmare AI, 
I've been really impressed with it, especially when it was free. I mean, now you have to pay. You can try it out for a little while. I don't know how many images. They don't specify that, but after you've tried it for free for a while, they will start charging you, unfortunately now. But I do think it is a valid option. If we compare it to a Gigapixel, which was one of my favorites so far, um, I think it is good competition. I do like Gigapixel slightly more, I think, but Nightmare AI, um, definitely very good and probably a bit of a cheaper option to get started with. Now, a couple more things to mention about Nightmare AI is that, first of all, it is really, really fast, I've found. So uh, upscaling the images only takes a few seconds usually, which is a great benefit and a uh, downside unfortunately is that the files are quite big so uh, usually if you use like a one megabyte two megabyte original file then uh, the upscaled version turns out like 10 megabytes or bigger which is a bit annoying um, takes a while to download it, it takes longer to upload to print on demand websites if that's how you want to use the images so that's definitely worth bearing in mind um, but let's move on to our last option which is called waifu xl and this is actually free at the moment to use you can donate to them but i haven't seen any details about having to pay it seems to be free and um, it doesn't retain as much detail which is a bit unfortunate i think this is more built for like anime or you know, more like vector graphics. So if you compare it to Nightmare AI, yes, the detail gets lost quite a bit. So for photography, I would not really recommend this tool, um, even though it is free. But if you compare it to the original, it definitely does a good job getting rid of the pixelation and the JPEG artifacts, um, which is obviously really, really handy. It almost turns it into a bit of a vector graphic which is good. Um, now, Waifu XL has got some downsides, unfortunately. So it runs on your device, on your PC. So uh, it took me quite a long time to upscale these images. Um, and I do have a decent PC. So I could imagine that someone with like a, a cheaper laptop might be sat there for like 10, 20 minutes to upscale an image. Um, you can though, with the free version, you can upscale by eight times, which is really handy. You're just going to have to wait quite a bit longer, but it's definitely worth trying out since it is free. And that is quite rare in terms of the image upscalers that we have. And unfortunately, it's not the most detailed upscaler, but it is an option and it is definitely worth giving a try. I think overall, if I had to summarize this, Gigapixel is one of the better options in terms of the quality. However, it's also quite a bit more of an investment. So things like Nightmare AI are definitely worth still giving a try. Photoshop, if you have it, yes, then, then try it out. But if not, I wouldn't invest into Photoshop just for the upscaler. Big JPEG was a great option because it's quite affordable and it does a decent job, although it loses quite a bit of detail, so not ideal for photos. An image larger retains a bit of detail, which is good, but also adds some weird funky colors, which I didn't really like too much. So I hope that gives you a good overview of these tools and helps you make a decision with which one you want to pick. I hope you enjoyed this video please comment down below which image upscaler you are currently using and also if you want to see a comparison of midjourney version 5 to version 4 when it comes to print on demand graphics then make sure to check out this video next where i test multiple prompts to see which version is better